What's up guys, welcome back to Trouble Back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be working on my BMW, I mean, um, Toyota, wait, I think it's Toyota, Toyota. So, I don't know why for the longest time, I've only said Toyota and no one's ever corrected me in my entire life. And I know it's spelled out T-O-Y, like toy and then Yoda, but I don't know why. My entire life, I just always said it Toyota and no one ever corrected me. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess uh, now since I own a, uh, Toyota, I have to say Toyota. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna constantly say it's a BMW because just because of these Toyota badges, don't let that fool you, this is a BMW. So, um, welcome to my BMW Supra. <laughs> Today's goal is to finally get this thing a clean wash. I wanna get this thing washed up. Now, obviously, the driver's window can close, but the passenger window, which is where all the damage is at, that does not close whatsoever. So I wanna roll up the car, I wanna clean as much of the car as possible, and then I also wanna start removing some things and get that stuff rebuilt. For example, thank goodness no one was sitting passenger because if somebody was sitting passenger, this would've got seized up. This was actually perfectly good. Um, dash airbag did not deploy. I think the seat buckle is also good. You guys can see how much it kinda sticks out. This is the driver's one. The seat buckle, I mean, honestly, it might be still good. I don't know, we're gonna have to run the codes and actually check on that. But someone was obviously sitting in the driver's seat because this seat I don't know if you guys can see, is just dangling. It's just, it's dangling, it's seized up. This needs to get rebuilt. I figured while we get these seatbelts rebuilt, we might actually get some yellow ones installed as well to match the paint. I'm actually thinking doing yellow seatbelts and a custom steering wheel with a yellow stripe. Let me know <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about that, but I think it looks super sick. So yeah, I wanna pull out the seatbelts, pull out the seat buckles, um, probably take that stuff down to LD Solutions to get rebuilt. I bet that's a lot cheaper than actually getting new parts. I've been doing so much research on used parts for this car, guys, and there's literally nothing Thing. Like even doors, I can only find like two or three, and people are overpricing the heck out of them. Side skirts, I did get it for a really cheap deal. I think I got a side skirt for like 200 bucks, so that's really cheap. But in terms of a quarter panel, cheapest quarter panel I can find, we're talking like two, three grand. Um, I did actually find someone on eBay that's willing to chop his car and sell me exactly what I need. So I think the first thing I want to do is just get this thing in running order. I want to replace all the airbags, get the airbag light to go away so it's safe to drive, and then actually drive this thing down to my frame guy and have him diagnose the damages and let me know what I need to do exactly. Do I need an entire quarter panel from, from pretty much the outside to the inside? I honestly don't know, mainly because this whole section is good. There is no gap issues here. I might want to do a section install. Now, I don't know if a section install is professional, but I know there's three ways to go about this. There's the first way, which you can pull out the images, and then you just bottom the whole thing up, and then you call it a day, which is uh, the janky way. Yeah, that's the cheapest way, but you will see the Bondo wave marks. Eventually, when you close the door multiple times, then eventually it'll crack all that Bondo, and that's just a very cheap way to do it. But I've seen cars like that before, like an E60 M5 that I went to go look at. One time, the entire side passenger side was bondoed up. So you can just tell, I didn't even have to knock on it. You were able to just tell it was all bondo. So that is a cheap way, maybe $500 to do something like that. Now the most expensive way is to get it cut from right over here and get it cut right over here and get it cut from the back of the trunk, like right over here and absolutely gut everything in the interior, exterior of the car um, and get that replaced. Like you can just genuinely cut the whole frame, remove the seats, remove the carpets, cut it from like midway through the seats. I mean, there is that expensive way, which obviously will fix it like 100%. Um, it's just that we're talking probably parts alone, three G's, labor, probably another three G's, six grand to get that sorted. I know I said there's three ways, but there's actually four ways. The fourth way, I don't know if I'm gonna go about it just yet, but uh, let me explain to you guys the second way. So you guys heard the most expensive, you guys heard the least expensive. So the medium one is actually sectioning off the damages. What I could do is probably, because this honestly, guys, is actually good. This is where it's supposed to be, this damage right here. If I was to cut this, probably go around the gas cap all the way down, section that off. Honestly, I might even go down there and try to film all this and then probably get a section like right over here or possibly right over here. Uh, we'll see. We just need to get obviously all this stuff pulled out because honestly, the only damage is right over here. There's no buckles in there. Yeah, it's 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 bent a little, but that can get pulled out no problem. And there's no buckles back here. So let me know if a sectioning is the best way to go. I think a sectioning would cost so much cheaper. Still doing a proper job because we're replacing the necessary stuff that needs to be replaced. So there's not gonna be any buckles, no extra excess Bondo or anything like that. And obviously the last thing we can do um, which, you know, it's an option. I think this car is already girthy as it is, and I've been contemplating it all night whether or not I wanna do a wide body kit on this car. What we can do, honestly, is just get this all pulled out and then just kind of shape the metal, you know, pull out the metal as much as we can, and then 
honestly cut it all off. We can cut it all off, replace the door, um, replace the side skirt, cut the side skirt, do what we need to do, cut the inner liner, because we can technically cut the quarter panel like all right here for adding a wide body on here. It is gonna make it way wider than what it is already. But honestly guys, I think this thing already has enough girth nation. Like I don't know if I want an extra, you know, like five or six inches of girth to it. I think it's a little too much. I think this car was already designed with enough girth. I mean like sheesh, look at that. If he did go with the wide body kit, um, I mean there's a lot of options out there. Um, but also at the same time, if I wanna do any power stuff with this car, it is gonna be a lot heavier. For example, it's a B58. If I wanna push 400 reliably, I probably can. If I wanna push 450 reliably, I probably can. But with the wide body, then I have to go with air suspension. I probably have to go with some three-piece bigger wheels and some bigger tires. I probably not gonna be pushing numbers anywhere close to where it was stock originally. But it would look really good. And that's where I'm kind of like contemplating. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be doing right now. Uh, but as of right now, what we need to do is obviously get this thing in running order. It does run and drive. I'm hoping it should be taking this out for a test drive in the near future. So first things first, actually getting all this airbag stuff you know dialed in so we can get that light off the dash but before we actually get into that um today's video is sponsored by carly so let's go ahead and check what codes we are and see what things actually deployed in the accident is our seat buckle good because it looks good um but only a code can tell so for those of you guys who don't know what carly is carly is a bmw scanner and uh yeah i mean this is a bmw i mean just just ignore the badge bmw badge right there but honestly this adapter is a universal adapter will work on a lot of other cars as well i just use it for a lot of BMW stuff and I love it for BMWs because you can also do custom coding. This car in particular, when you hold the lock button, I notice that the mirror caps roll in already. So I don't know if that's coded or, uh, or that's how it comes naturally, but that's something you guys can code in with your BMW. And when you unlock your car, um, you guys can hear the BMW chime and everything. It unlocks the mirrors. That's something you can get it coded with Carly. Now when I hold the lock button, uh, my window doesn't roll up. That's something you get coded with Carly. Um, if you get a new battery in the car, you don't have to take it to BMW and get that coded by BMW. There's so many things you can get coded with Carly that makes life so much easier. But today's goal is to just diagnose what's blown and what's not. All right guys, now that we got Carly hooked up, let's just go ahead and connect our phone. Uh, for those of you guys who also don't know, Carly is a Bluetooth device, so uh, no wires connect it straight to your phone. I believe it also works with Android, but don't quote me on that. I think maybe they have a separate Android adapter and a Apple adapter. So that's what I think they have going about them. This is a universal adapter. This might work for both. But again, I'm not 100% sure on that. Make sure to check out the website down below. And once I'm actually in health, I'm just gonna go ahead and run the diagnostics. And right now it's just pretty much running the codes, seeing what codes are in the car and what is not. I have a lot of you guys that always ask me, Nor, bro, like what's going on, dude? Um, I replaced all the airbags in my car, I replaced even the seat belts, and I still have an airbag light. Um, Carly's gonna be able to tell you exactly what that is. It could be the sensor itself, because once you get in the accident, the sensor could be damaged, or the wire could have ripped for the sensor, or it could be your just your seat buckle. And without, honestly, a code reader, you were just gonna have to go check everything, um, but obviously, if you already reassembled your entire car, it's gonna be super hard to find out if it's the sensor or not, so having the Carly adapter does make life a whole lot easier. All right, guys, now after running the codes, uh, no check engine stuff came back, which is a really good sign. So thankfully, again, everything is gravy in the Navy with that, but we do have 13 airbag lights. The car access system is also throwing in some issues, but obviously we have an entire door that's pretty much smashed. So uh, yeah, that could be the result for that issue. We're going to check the rest of these errors probably later, but the primary thing, as you guys can see in the red, we have 13 airbag faults. So if we're just gonna go ahead and run through this, the first one says real tension or driver, short circuit to ground, real tension or driver, short circuit to negative. So the tensioner itself for the seat buckle, I believe that is what that code is for. The head airbag right. So obviously that means the current airbag for the right side. So this is left side and that's clearly noticeable. The right side is deployed. Um, says belt force limiter driver, resistance too big, force limiter driver, resistance too big. So belt force. Um, that itself, I believe, is the seat belt. This one is already pretty much seized up. It's not coming out. Um, that's one way to check is just tugging on it. If it doesn't go back in, it's bad. The third thing, it says resistance too small. Um, that honestly could be the sensor itself. Uh, and then the last one is real tensioner driver resistance too big. So um, obviously, it's, it's, it's only throwing stuff for the driver side. Uh, the, the rest of these are honestly just random faults. Um, that's probably getting thrown because of these main faults. So it looks like honestly two current airbags, the driver's seatbelt and the driver's seatbelt tensioner. Um, so that's pretty good. It also could be possibly maybe the sensor as well for the passenger side. Um, but we won't know honestly until we get the rest of these knocked out. So yeah, that's what's cool about Carly. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and just take this seat out, remove the seat buckle, remove the seat belts, both of them actually, because we're gonna get them done in yellow, which is gonna be pretty sick. That 
was probably one of the easiest seats to pull out, guys. This thing is so soft and super easy to carry. Honestly, um, I don't know if this is real leather or fake leather. For those of you guys who are super fans, you'll be able to let me know down below, but this feels really nice and very comfortable. Yeah, one easy connection there. And then to actually remove the seatbelt though, we do have to remove it off of here. So that being said, I think think yeah there's a clip right in here once you move that clip there's just a bolt and this seatbelt just comes off and the tensioner itself it looks like it's not one of those tensioners that you can tell if it's deployed or not or maybe this tensioner is good i honestly have no idea because this doesn't look like it's deployed it looks perfectly fine in my opinion Now, I don't really know how hard it is going to be able to get this seatbelt out, but uh, we're just going to start pulling things apart because I've actually never done this before, obviously, and I don't think there's much videos on this on YouTube either, so let's just go ahead and send it, and uh, I'm just going to pretty much do it the way I would do it if it was a BMW. I probably should have worked my way down. So uh, I was afraid when removing these, because on BMWs, the speakers are actually attached to the speaker grill. But this isn't the case in a Toyota slash BMW. So uh, long story short, I popped off this guy, then you're supposed to pop off this guy, and then you pop off the last one. And uh, the way the clips are held in is into the actual carpet. I've never actually seen that, so actually I broke all the clips on that. And actually I broke this piece as well. So uh, this entire piece needs to be replaced. Not a big deal. I'm sure this is not like too expensive, like 15, no, nah, I would say about like 20 or uh, 50 bucks max on eBay. But yeah, not a big deal. I'm happy I broke probably the cheapest piece rather than that piece. That piece looks expensive. This piece, I can't imagine it costing too much. But yeah, guys, we got the seatbelt out. This is a two-stage seatbelt. Um, so this will probably cost about 120 to 150 to get rebuilt. I think Toyota charges uh, $200 for a new belt or $300 for a new belt. So regardless, this is gonna be cheaper to rebuild this one and at the same time while it's getting rebuilt I'm gonna have them redo the belt in yellow um, so probably a whole lot cheaper while we're doing it all at the same time but yeah guys we kind of did half the battle uh, because we're gonna have to remove the headliner soon we removed pretty much everything out of the way for the headliner um, I'm probably gonna go to the trunk of trying to figure out how this stuff comes off because again we're gonna have to remove all this stuff anyways uh, to get the headliner out hopefully in the next video we'll be able to do the curtain airbags and fully assemble this room I think it'll be so sick if we get to do that this guy accepted my offer so quickly see so yeah, I just got one for 30 bucks uh, super happy about that now as far as the passenger side this is obviously the side with most of the issues now getting to these seatbelt controls and getting to the seat buckle might be a little bit of a pain but i think if i shove something in there at least get the seat to move up forward a little bit it might be a little easier actually moving these trim pieces as well probably be a whole lot easier i'm not gonna actually remove this bottom piece just because i don't think i have to remove it and i'll avoid me from breaking this side i, I really don't see the reasons why i need to actually pull this out oh we might have to remove it anyways to get this fixed so oh buddy okay this is gonna have to come out again hopefully i don't break this Side. Let's go ahead and just remove all this stuff, all this stuff. I'll uh, set you guys up over there. Hopefully I break less things on the, the second time. So surprisingly, on the driver's side, I broke every single tab known to man on this piece. And on the passenger side, where the accident was, and this piece was actually being flexed, uh, nothing broke. I absolutely preserved every single tab on here, and I preserved every single tab on here. So actually how this works is I thought you pretty much just pull on it. You apparently need to slide it upwards. So for those of you guys who have our Supra, we're gonna be rebuilding a Supra, make sure you just slide this piece upwards. If you do break it, I found uh, two on eBay, one for 30, uh, one for 35, I sent him an offer for 30, I got it for 30 bucks, and there's another one for 45, so sure if you send him an offer for 30, 35, you'll get it. So not too expensive there. In terms of the seat belts, I took out both of them, like I said, to get them both in yellow. This one is blown, it looks like both sides are blown because uh, the clips that were hanging on to both igniters are broken, so I'm hoping none of these got damaged. Uh, this one looks like it's a little bit bowed out, and that's a little bowed out, so I guess that's how it's supposed to be. I have them both on the ground. Normally, I would not put brand new seat belts on the ground, but since 
units were getting it replaced. Who cares? So now that we kind of have like an inside scoop to the damage behind here, um, nothing actually seems to be too badly buckled. I mean, I guess we can look in here as well. Um, yeah, like the inside wall does not seem to be affected, surprisingly. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the inside wall kind of like it's even throughout the entire thing, but it's just the upper wall that's been pushed in. So I think, think we might get lucky. Sorry guys, I'm just like pulling random things out of here. <laughs> I think we might get lucky and the upper piece might be able to just get pulled out and all of our issues will be fixed. Because again, look at that corner there. Doesn't, it, there is no buckles whatsoever. Let me go ahead and show you guys the other corner as well. That is exactly how it looks on the other side. If you guys look in here, there's actually like two pieces. So like there's this wall right here and then there's another welding piece that's right in here throughout this entire part. Um, the other side is that this top part is like bowed inwards, but I'm pretty sure if you pull it out, it's not gonna affect the structural integrity of the inside of the car. Um, that being said, again, I'm not a professional. I'm gonna take it to the body shop, whatever they recommend, we're gonna go ahead and get that done with. I'm actually probably gonna take it to a frame shop. This is a little too much for a body shop. But yeah, looking back over here, um, again, it looks really, really, really good back here. Thank the Lord. This is how the damage is looking. It's honestly not that bad. <laughs> what the heck look what i found underneath this seat it's got a receipt staple to it and everything i just found myself a hot wheel in our toyota supra there was a couple other junk stuff over here yes don't worry i'm gonna wash my hands but i mean hey we got a free hot wheel i mean hot wheels nowadays is a rare commodity let me tell you all right i'm gonna go ahead and just hop in here surprisingly guys there's no speakers here because the speakers are all in the back it looks so baller having speakers right behind you i mean yeah we don't have an engine behind us but i mean speakers yo that's some cool stuff honestly these carpets are clean enough i'm gonna go ahead and just take a seat in here uh oh my god guys like this car honestly is just so nice dude sheesh <laughs> guys look how much lights we got on the dash right now all we got is airbag lights and a tpms light because our tire pressure is low um it's always saying the driver's door is open but if you close i mean not the driver's door the passenger door we only have the passenger door um that needs some work but uh check that out guys Look how healthy that is. It is really cold and I'm gonna go ahead and pop a few revs real quick um, as soon as this thing kind of warms up. But uh, this is crazy, this is crazy. I, I love this car so much, guys. This steering wheel from the factory feels really nice. I mean, regardless, I kind of want to get an Ozzo wheel regardless because I want the yellow stripe there. I want yellow seat belts. I want this thing to look super clean. I want it unique, end of the day. But honestly, guys, this steering wheel, if it fits a BMW and you're able to replace this horn with a BMW horn, I would definitely retrofit this into an F30. Like this steering wheel feels so nice. I don't know, something about the leather or something just feels super high quality i don't know if i showed you guys either but this thing is a touch screen which is super cool so we're gonna close message there go ahead uh close one more message ah come on we have so no 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 i don't want to contact anybody go right over here shows mpg and everything i think this is like the new iDrive system my phone's not connected to it but it's supposed to show up something over here for apple carplay wireless apple carplay which is super sick and this is the weirdest thing ever on a complete side note this is the only piece of carbon fiber on this entire interior. We have no carbon fiber there. Um, this is more of like a gloss black, which I just don't get why they make that in carbon fiber. This is not in carbon fiber. It's all gloss black. Uh, this is gloss black. I mean, this is the only piece of carbon fiber. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is some beautiful piece of carbon fiber, but I definitely think they should have added some more. I think maybe some people are gonna start selling some carbon fiber bits for this car, and I might have to cop it. There is a wireless charging pad right there, which I think is super sick. I also love this ingenious thing where they put this plastic thing right over your phone so your phone doesn't like pop up over a bump it stays in there which is super nice so i really like that for some reason no center console which is kind of weird i mean we have a little bit of storage here two really nice cup holders i mean i mean i know this is a toyota and a bmw cup holder so it looks like they made this real right bmw honestly the only thing you need to work on is their cup holders and another thing i noticed when i was reading you guys' comments is that one of you guys said that uh this car apparently because it's also built with toyota not Toyota, 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 nor this is gonna take some time. <laughs> One of you guys said down in the comments that Toyota basically had to set a bunch of like rules or like regulations or whatever when they were actually building this B58. So this B58 is a little bit different than your standard M440. Um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say standard, but I mean like your typical M440 or your M340. This is actually different. I don't know what exactly is different. I don't know what they changed exactly, but one of you guys in the comments said 
that they built this basically to be more reliable because it is a Toyota um, and it's also BMW and they want to uphold the Supra name. Uh, so let me know guys down below what you guys think about that exactly and is that accurate? I probably have to do some research myself, uh, but again guys, this thing is running like a beaut. No lights on the dash. Uh, again, only the airbag lights. We'll get that sorted hopefully soon. Toyota is going to be calling me pretty soon so we can actually get these curtain airbags replaced. As soon as you get those replaced, I'm going to put the whole headliner back together. And what's actually really nice is we have to remove the seat belts. We actually cleared up the whole rear section. So we only have to focus on this front section here and there's no sunroof. So it should be really easy to take off this headliner and then I think we just have to drill out uh, the rivets for the airbags replace the airbags put new rivets uh, should be some good stuff take it some time to warm up <laughs> <laughs> it's still only on the first bar. I'm gonna go ahead and come back to you on a little bit once this thing's actually warmed up. All right, guys, now that the car is warmed up, the car is in sports mode. Check out these burbles, guys, for a stock car, stock exhaust. <laughs> Just check this out. Crazy dude. But yeah, guys, that is gonna have to conclude this video. Hopefully, I'll be able to pick up these curtain airbags later today or tomorrow so we can get these things installed. Um, and then probably end up taking the seat buckles in the same video tomorrow. So hopefully tomorrow put in the airbags, put in the put back on the headliner, make that perfect, and then and then drop off everything at LD Solutions. Now that will take some time at LD Solutions to get that stuff done. It won't be like a 24-hour turnaround. I think it'll be at least like a day or two, possibly even three days. So once all that stuff gets done, it'll be to throw it back on this car and then make more videos on this car probably take this down to the frame shop actually and get the damage diagnosis see if we need to order an entire quarter panel or if we could just kind of get that repaired and then order just the outer skin or something like that so we'll go ahead and figure that out in an upcoming video but in the meantime guys that's gonna have to conclude the video we are gonna be getting our 328 e92 daily back on the channel pretty soon we got the front bumper paint match the rear bumper paint match and the side mirror caps paint match i'm just getting it buff polished and uh, ceramic coated as well because it is the new daily and i want the thing to be absolutely perfect uh once we get that back we have a bunch of maintenance from FCP Euro and a bunch of little things I want to add to the car to make that thing perfect so we have the ultimate daily. Right now I'm dailing the E92 M3 or my, my truck, my Nissan Titan. They're both V8 and that's definitely not a good way to save money because gas prices are crazy as you guys know, especially like me living in California paying upwards of $6 a gallon. So uh, yes. Without further ado guys, I love y'all so much. Thank you guys for the blessings and the opportunities that are always coming my way. Thank you guys for supporting the channel no matter what and uh, I can't wait to bring you guys the best content possible. So without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.